Thank you for joining us today at uh, ETRA webinar uh, brought to us to buy seal aftermarket products and some other fine sp sponsors, NatPro, Gears, WIT, Transtar. Uh, thanks again, seal aftermarket, for making this possible. Seal aftermarket products, engineers and manufacturers, Toledo Transkit the most trusted and complete kits in the industry for 25 years. Like our SU wool products, we don't just make no transcast dollars because of all the incidents to each component, preventing EPC damage by eliminating the shredding you get from plus all of the extra great uh, components and parts to build these transmissions successfully. Um, they have done a great, great job. Um, if you have any questions, comments, um, Please email uh, webinars at atra.com. You know, I, I would love some feedback on what you liked, what you didn't like, uh, what you'd like to see in the future. Those kind of things really help us, so we can make something that's better for you. Um, any information and feedback, we always are going to save any screen file at the bottom of your screen. The screen is going 90 diagnostics, uh, July 25th. Uh, other upcoming ones, we're working on the 09G, uh, beginning of August, and then I will be doing the RE0F10AB CVT uh, transmission uh, introduction into that. Um, so any feedback, uh, please let me know. Our expo. Usually, uh, we are closer to, the, to Halloween. This all this the best of the best, um, in my opinion. We have the best techs, best speakers, best uh, vendors, and usually just have a great time. Uh, you always get your money back um, uh, from the information that you've learned on these seminars. Uh, great for technical information, management information, and also just you know resourcing out to other shops. Uh, always well worth the money spent. Today we're going to be speaking um, on the RE0F08B transmission, the CVT Jackco. Um, there are other transmissions very similar, the RE0F08A and the 09A and B are also very similar. But this one, all the pictures that we are showing today are all going to be the 08B, but the others are similar. Some of our other webinars, um, we have covered some of the internal components of the different JATCO transmissions, CBTs, and other ones. If you uh, have missed any of the webinars, you can go to the ATRA website in the Tech Repair Center. In the webinar section, you can download and watch the pictures and download the handouts. I really urge everybody to stay on top of these webinars as they're the most frequent, the most up-to-date information we have out there. I just got done making this uh, webinar about two weeks ago. So um, they're very current. Uh, today we're gonna go over um, the disassembly of the, the 09 or the 08B transmission uh, and the others are very similar to this. But we're gonna be talking about the 08B. Here we have um, the 08A on the right or the left, and the 09A on the right. The, the 09A version is usually the V6, usually the 3.5 liters, uh, more torque, more horsepower uh, behind those engines. Uh, the 08A and 8B are, I'm going to say, the smaller of the two. Identification um, is not easy on these CVTs, uh, especially when it comes to cores, when it comes to those kind of things, getting used parts. So help your parts guys out, have the information off the transmission. Uh, there is a model number on the top, you know, like uh, here shows a 1XB6B. Um, that's telling us it's a RE0F08A transmission, it's gonna be found the MR18DE motor, and it gives you the gear ratios, those kind of things. But when we're matching up pulleys, chains, valve bodies, sometimes a lot of the vendors uh, like to have this model number off of it. 
it makes it that much easier for them to, to get you guys the correct bearings, pulleys, those kind of things. So make sure you ID these transmissions. The other thing is if you get cores, which I recommend uh, cores if you're going to be building CVTs, the more cores you can get on this, the more money you're going to save. Um, these numbers you can find in all data, uh, Mitchell, uh, ProDemand, those kind of places. Look up the vehicle and then under identification, usually this information is under there. Here's a list of what we have so far um, on 08As, 08Bs, 09As, and 09Bs. As you see, they these are basically uh, the Nissan transmissions. Other similars are Jeeps and Dodges um, are very similar too. Transmission we're going to be working on today is going to be actually in the cube. Um, there's the rest of the list. Here's what we're working on today. RE0F08B. The number on top of it was 1XC6B code. That was the number off the top of the trans. This trans, uh, they are the ones that uh, gave me this transmission to go ahead and tear down two pictures on and do research. Thank you very much for the use of the core. One other thing, the RE0FOAA transmission looks very similar to this. One thing it does have difference that you can tell on the outside, the rain switch and the primary speed sensor, which is the one by the back cover, are both inside the transmission on the ROAAs. So if you have a, a RE0F0AA, the internal rain switch is going to be on the inside. Primary speed sensor is also going to be on the inside. Let's get the valve body off. Basic remove pan just like anything else. This is uh, like your return line cartridge filter. Um, one thing I found in interesting about this filter, I tried and pulled, twisted, anything I could really do besides destroying this housing, you cannot get that filter out of the housing. So when you order a new one, you get the aluminum housing and you get the cartridge filter with it. It wasn't that bad uh, price-wise. I think it was under 20 bucks. I can't remember exactly, but it, it was it was under $20. I have heard that aftermarket um, seal aftermarket products has these in stock. Some other uh, stores, suppliers, vendors have them also. Um, dealerships, you can find them too. The shift shaft rail goes all the way through this valve body. So to get the valve body off, you're going to have to remove the nut, the little link, linkage arm that goes over to the manual valve. Underneath the, the arm, you're going to find a sleeve. Don't lose that sleeve. Um, so you, nothing really special, but it, I lost the sleeve or I dropped the sleeve when pulling the valve body the first time so I could see it easily being done. So make sure you, you find that sleeve and make sure it goes in your small, small parts bin. Remove your 10 millimeter bolts there in the circles, and then disconnect the connector for the wiring harness. One thing about this wiring harness, the wires are very small. A lot of the wires have pins in them. Most of every one of them have uh, wires in that pin, in the pin configuration. A lot of the wires will go up into the harness and will just be a dead wire, meaning they're going to be cut off. So. Some of those wires are normal to, normal to be broken in half or cut because it, there's, it doesn't go to anything. But there has been a lot of broken wires and a lot of issues and connector issues right there at that case connector, and it, it makes a big turn on the wiring right there. So look at that area also. Under the valve body, I'm going to find two seals. The one on the left is for lube. The one on the right is for your uh, reverse clutch. You can air check your reverse clutch there. We remove the bell housing, and this is what you have. Um, one thing about CVT transmissions, they need to be absolutely clean as you can possibly get them, cleaner than any other transmission you build. So the, the 10 shields on the bottom there on the left, you need to take those out, you need to wash them, scrub them, clean them. Most of the time these things need to be scrubbed in the solvent tank, run through the cleaner, blown off very well. Um, remove the shields because they have a lot of debris 
and gunk behind them. One other thing you may find laying on your bench is, is a little roll pin, about two inches long, about an eighth inch round or so. Um, it usually falls out with disassembly uh, process. That goes over and keeps the linkage in place over on the right hand side there. Uh, we get a lot of calls on, on that leftover piece and where does it go? You can go ahead and remove the diff after getting that front bill housing off. They're just roller bearings. Check your roller bearings, make sure they're not pitted, nice and free. There's a shim. It goes on the main case side, not on the bell housing side, the main case side. That's where the shim goes. Move your pump, nothing special here. Take off the, uh, the O-ring for lockup on the input shaft. Remove your 12 millimeter bolts. Underneath your pump, you have a Torrington bearing and a steel um, gasket, pump gasket. You also see another dam over there on the diff side. Make sure that gets taken out and cleaned just like the other side. Pump, nothing special, gear pump. Um, one thing I would like to, to mention, this one does not have a flow control valve on the pump. A lot of your CVTs, Jacko CVTs, have a flow control valve in the pump. Almost every one I've seen has wear. Transco and Sonics both has repairs for those flow controls valves out there. If your transmission has one in it, this one does not. But if you're building like a 010A, uh, 011A, those, they have flow control valves, very highly worn areas. Make sure you check that area. Um, this side is just a, a basic gear pump. Um, one thing that we do see a lot of stuff is with the front seal. Um, make sure you do not push the seal in any farther than possible. This is symbol pump. Nothing special here. Make sure your gear clearance is correct. 0 0.003 or less. I want to make sure it's flat. Got three bushings to check. Your pump bushing. I just like to your converter. When you get your converter in, check that bushing on the converter. Make sure it's snug. Make sure it's not worn out. If you need to change bushings on these, I recommend you get the bushings in your hands before you start knocking any bushings out and do some measuring. Make sure they're correct. And if you just start knocking bushings out, you may have some issues finding bushings for these things. So for, first, check fit. Second, get bushings in hand. Third is then going to go ahead and replace the bushing if you have it. Check the stator bushing. That's your lockup oil. Input shaft needs to be centered, needs to be stabled. Also, this has a bushing on the inner pump gear that rides on your stator. Make sure both areas, surfaces are nice and free of any scratches and that kind of stuff. Uh, it's a very thin bearing, very snug bearing also. Um, but check that. Next thing we did was pull the, the input shaft out, and this is what we got. Your, your Torrington bearing uh, orientation, your forward drum, another Torrington bearing, then you have your splined hub. Uh, this hub goes into to the forward clutch. The sun gear part of it has some splines in there. It splines directly right onto your primary pulley. So when this clutch is engaged going forward, it's basically a straight shot through. You got your input shaft, you have your uh, hub, which is held by your forward clutches, which is driving the primary pulley, so it's straight shot through. Um, the planet. The planet um, splines directly right into the bottom of that forward clutch. Um, that's driving the planet when you're when the reverse is engaged. A couple of plastic washers in your shell. Here's your forward forward drum assembly disassembled. Nothing really special here. Um, you just have bonded piston, spring retainer, balance piston, dish plate like most forward um, clutches. Dish goes up on this. The center part is facing up. This one had three clutches, three steels, normal separa separator plate, nothing special there. 
there's absolutely no information on rebuilding this transmission from the factory. Um, this unit was a good, uh, looked good inside, no hot spots, clutches were in good shape. I measured 35,000 clearance, so you don't want to be in that ballpark. I remember this clutch is on in all forward gears, it never releases, only comes on during the engagement. So 35,000. To check your forward clutch, drop the drum on the pump, block the one hole, air test your forward clutch with the hole shown. It's going to be a dead, ter dead tight air check, it's about 30 pounds, 35 pounds. It, it, it thumps good. Uh, you don't have any leaks. I re would remove the input shaft, change your sealing rings. Um, you have three, three rings that are the same size, control of lockup oil and oil to your primary pulley. Check those ring lands, check the rings real well also. Um, haven't had many complaints, but I see that, that seal in the middle there that is sealing, lockup, and primary oil. Those are totally different pressures there. So that seal, in my opinion, may be a problem down the road. Uh, I haven't gotten many complaints on that, but I'm keeping an eye on that to see what's going on there. Um, and I could see some more wear in that seal. Uh, we have one smaller seal uh, towards the bottom of that input shaft that goes directly into the primary pulley. Reverse clutch. Uh, the reverse clutch snap ring orientation shown up top there. No ID marks or no no splines that it has to be in, but that's where it was when I disassembled it. Uh, you see a reverse air check um, on the right hand side there, set right by the piston. Again, no clutch spare, uh, specs from the factory. This one was 45 thousandths. A um, little bit on the looser side, which is fine. The only time this clutch is on is in reverse. We don't want this dragging uh, going forward. Here's a stack up that goes into the case. It's the bonded piston in the bottom, conical spring kind of thing, and a spring retainer. Dish plate, dish goes down on this, this clutch. Nothing special on the clutch, uh, clutches or pressure plates, tabs or anything like that. You need to watch out for just a real basic build. Uh, clutch clearance again is, is, is 0.45. This is the back of the case. Um, what we're getting ready to do is to disassemble the pulley set, uh, assembly. Uh, when I did this trans, it started at the front. I need to remove that mount bracket. In that mount bracket, there's another bolt. You're not uh, yellow or the red circles. Just remove the outer 12, 12 millimeter bolts. Pry that end cover off. The pulleys are going to stay in the end cover. Um, see where that arrow is, that pin there, and that rod. That goes into your ratio control arm on the bow body, and that's the other pivot point to that ratio control arm. Um, note the direction of the belt. I like to take pictures of this uh, before you disassemble it. I also like to engrave or uh, scrape on the belt uh, which direction it goes. Um, sometimes I have seen the ink wash off um, of the belt in the solvent tank. So make sure you take a couple pictures here uh, to make sure it gets it back in the correct orientation. Also, at this time, it's a good time to wrap two zip ties around the belt because if the outer part of the, that belt comes apart, those little bands come off, uh, no, no luck getting that back together. Alrighty, I prefer to use the PosiLock puller. Um, to me, I, I've had this thing probably for 15, 20 years uh, with used basically for standard transmissions to pull uh, the input shaft bearing it off uh, with the snap ring groove. I have found it works very well on CVT transmissions. Um, the only one so far I have not been able to do with it was the Subaru Generation 2. Um, it's a PosiLock puller. You can find it eBay, Amazon. Also, I've uh, seen a flyer the other day from Wit. Uh, Wit was stocking them also, so you may contact them. Some other suppliers may have them also, so you may, may, may ask them. Also, Transco has a, a puller tool that is kind of neat. 
it basically bolts to the pulley and then you use your 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 puller uh, your t-bar or puller um, to, to pull the pulley apart it works good I have used it um, it, it is not classified to work for this transmission so you may see uh, in the future if it will work or uh, they do work for other CBT transmissions uh, check with Transco on that so our main purpose here on the left is we're grabbing the outside of this pulley this pulley has spring tension on it clamping that belt together making it tight in the rear cover the so clamp onto the outside of that pulley pull up on that pulley and as you see in the middle picture the belt has uh, no tension on it it's kind of relaxed you see the zip ties there also to make sure the, the pulley or the belt stays together and then you see on the far right you can tip the one pulley out and remove the belt one other thing you can do before you you pull the pulleys out like this on the far right you can tip the uh, tip it over on the side and remove those three uh, bolts these three bolts here on the left remove those three bolts and you can bolt you can then take both pulleys out at the same time and re and get the belt off that way sometimes it's easier I prefer this this direction this way here other people have say they prefer moving both pulleys um, in doing it that way so either way it works just make sure you don't scar any of the uh, surfaces so back to those bolts uh, they have a, a little small ring on them rubber ring uh, or sealant uh, to seal on that rear cover make sure you reseal those up good also take note there are two um, shims one for each pulley in that rear cover we are going to move over to the primary pulley when we're talking CVT transmissions a lot of times you guys will get these things in for pressure problems um, other things will be noise problems so some of the stuff that we do see a lot of bearing noise primary pulley bearing noise secondary pulley bearing noise uh, make sure you check your bearings real well uh, check your diff bearings real well um, those have been complaints so to get the primary pulley apart we need to think of these pulleys as clutch drums uh, we rebuild all the clutch drums in a regular automatic transmission this is no different we have to pull these drums apart to inspect them pull the bearing off remove the nut underneath the bearing it's a normal right-handed threaded nut and then here's the bearing being removed after the bearing and nuts are being removed I put a bearing splitter on the far inside of that pulley um, you have to watch out for for um, not scratching the surface of that pulley I don't care for doing it this 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 way preferably uh, but on the outer side of this drum right above where that puller is that that puller did not want to pull it so I put a bearing splitter and was safely to be able to remove it this way did not damage the pulley or anything like that it popped off fairly easy I was uncertain how strong that top um, pulley was I seen it flexing so I, I didn't want to go that route uh, a big bearing splitter may, may do a little bit better in a press um, maybe another way of doing this it, it's not pressed together very hard when you're pulling these pulleys apart there's some balls in there for um, the splines this pulley had six balls these balls goes these balls go in the slot two per slot make sure these balls do not have any pits make sure the slots are not pitted or nice and smooth uh, or you're going to get get some pressure codes you're going to get some chattering you're going to get some noise when these pulleys move so inspect the grooves this is very very common uh, area to be worn um, you will be replacing pulleys because of wear uh, in these grooves uh, it's very rare to get good ones with high mileage units so these have to be pulled apart check your belt surfaces now onto the secondary pulley this this nut is a 40 millimeter nut 
it is a left-handed threaded nut, and there's nothing telling you it's left-handed thread that I, that I could see on the nut. The bottom side of the nut is stepped. The step goes towards the bearing. This is a left-handed threaded nut. After you get the nut off, go ahead and remove the bearing. Nothing big here. Get underneath the part gear and the um, gear and pull that off. Also, you could use a press here too, which would be just fine. Uh, this gear is directional. One side has a cutout, as you see here in the picture, right by the spine. There's a big groove there. The other side's ni nice and flat. Flat side goes down, groove, si groove side faces you. All right, so after you get park gear and the gear off, you're going to need to remove the outside snap ring and this piston. There's nothing under this fir first piston. There's no saline ring under this piston. Just basically get the snap ring out, tap it with a uh, hammer, and, and kind of work its way out. Nothing special there. Under, the, under, gear, under that piston, you have a, a, just a round retainer and two horseshoe clips. This is where we need to start using caution because there's a large spring underneath this pulley. Um, you can tell that by uh, trying to squeeze this pulley. You're not able to squeeze this pulley up and down like you're, you are the, able, the other one. So at this point, I would recommend putting the, the, uh, the gear back on and splining some, uh, the nut back on also. So if this thing comes shooting apart, it's going to stop on the gear. Knock the little retaining ring straight up. And then you're going to be able to knock those two horseshoe clips out. The ones I have knocked out, once I knock the horseshoe retainers out, I have not found one that will pop out or spring out once you remove those retainers. But it is spring loaded. So if there's something that broke or something's going on in there, do wash your fingers. As you see here on the left, I have the horseshoe clips removed. That's just a retainer I just left in there because of that I put the gear on uh, before I removed the horseshoe clips. Start pulling up on the outer side of that pulley. I did this with my posi lock puller. Once it got to a point, it popped, spring sprung up against the gear. Nothing went flying. But you definitely want to wash your fingers in between that piston and the gear. Do not keep anything in between there. It will hurt. Um, that spring, um, I'm going to say it's stronger than like a, a 518 reverse spring, but weaker than a, a 518 OD spring. Um, it, it definitely will hurt you, though. Watch out. Here's the breakdown. Um, on this secondary pulley, you have... Um, four balls in each groove. You got 12 balls uh, for your splines. Again, you have to check these spline areas. There, there's major, major problems in this area. Check that. Check the ceiling ring. Make sure it's clean underneath there. A lot of stuff gets underneath that ceiling ring. Um, there are kits out here to replace the seals and rebuild this transmission. So I uh, replace the seal. And you have your piston, those are your horseshoe retainers and the round retainer. Excuse me. Um, then you have one piston and the snap ring. There is no seals on this piston. There's your part gear, your regular gear, your bearing, and the direction the bearing goes on. Your left hand threaded nut, there's a lip on the bottom of that nut, it faces the bearing. Let's talk about some solenoids now. Um, one note, the RE0F08A um, valve body is very close to being the same as this, the same with the 9A and B. Um, the, the 8A, the ohms readings are definitely different. Um, the solenoids do look different. Valve body layout is very the same. Um, haven't got to the, the, the 09 A and B valve body quite yet. So I'm not sure how, mi how much difference there is compared to this one, but this, this is the layout for the RE0F08B as in boy. Um, line pressure solenoid. Some people call it pressure control solenoid. It's controlling just that, main line pressure, uh, pulley pressure. This is a normally high solenoid. Should have about 5.6 to 
or 6.6 ohms. Uh, there are two two pink colored wires going to this solenoid. Um, line pressure B solenoid. Uh, some people call it secondary pressure solenoid. Controls the pressure to the secondary pulley. Normally high solenoid. Also has 5.6 to 6.6 zero ohms. Um, two yellow colored wires to this solenoid. The torque converter clutch solenoid is just that controls uh, torque converter clutch. Um, it's a normally low solenoid. Same ohms resistance. And there's two blow, uh, blue colored wires going to this solenoid. Now we have an on off solenoid. It's a, a select solenoid. Some people call it lockup select solenoid. It's kind of a dual purpose solenoid. It controls lockup. But it also is used for shift engagement. Um, it's only turned on and off uh, for your shift engagement for forward and reverse. This is an on-off style solenoid, 12.3 to 13.5 ohms. There are two green wires going to the solenoid. Um, one thing about this transmission, there's zero to little information from the factory at all on any part of it. So. We're coming up with these uh, names and their functions and what they do. This is all stuff that we've done. Um, and then the valve body layout coming up is, is the same way. Um, the stepper motor is basically a stepper motor has four different coils in there and it's turned on and off each coil and it moves the motor and it will extend or extract the rod of the stepper motor. Rod of the extract, a stepper motor controls the ratio um, valve. Um, at this point, there's really no good way of testing uh, the stepper motor. There are some companies out there that's coming out with some stepper motors. There's some already available. I honestly haven't used any myself, but they're, they are coming out. I plan on getting one and playing around with it and see, see about testing these stepper motors. Um, at this point, I, I haven't seen a good way of testing it. Upper valve body. Hold on, let me stop here for a minute. We got some questions. Sorry about that. Um, we got a question. What's the best way to install the balls back in the primary um, pulley? Let me back up a few slides. Sorry, I, I didn't see that. So here's your your primary pulley. When I was to get it, when I was getting this back together. I first glued the balls to the shaft and I had a heck of a time getting them on. To me that didn't work. So I glued the balls inside the, the top pulley there um, and put them up against the spring and then I was able to get the balls and the pulley back together a lot easier. I did it this way for the primary and the uh, secondary pulley. It was easier to get the balls in the, uh, in the separate um, pulley not on the shaft itself. They they were going um, they were going back together a lot easier for me that way. Um, the other question we got here is where can we get the balls? Um, I'm not sure if the balls are included on some of the kits yet. I know I have seen some of the balls uh, included in the Transco shift kits. I'm sure there's other vendors out there too. I'm sure Sonics may have the balls separately. Seal may have the balls. Um, honestly, the balls that I've been using uh, have been coming from cores, good used um, cores, that kind of stuff, because I had a fair, quite a few of them. Um, so I'm just reusing the balls. But I did see in the, the Transco information that they install some new balls. Make sure they're the correct, correct size. I'm not sure if it fits your steering mission. Um, let's see, so the other question is steel balls on primary and secondary. I already got that. Thanks, David. Um, and then what size are the balls? Don't hold me to this. I believe they're six millimeter. I, I could be wrong on that. Um, if you want to shoot me an email, uh, I can get you that information. I should have uh, had that um, on this slide. So 
next next webinar I'll do I'll measure the balls and make sure I get that size um, put on on the slides and the information out if you do have questions uh, please let me know I, I, I will answer the questions I, I don't have the information in front of me right now though Let's see. You know we were at the valve body. Here we go. So here's uh, valve body layout. Um, valve body. Um, this is the upper valve body. You see your solenoid ID here. Um, pressure A, B, TCC, and select, and your pressure switch sensor A, right underneath those. This has like a wiring harness uh, assembly that kind of bolts the top with like a, a ROM and all that um, bolts to the top also. Um, it kind of bolt, uh, bolts in there. There's your ratio control valve. It, connect, it connects to your stepper motor and that shaft that was on the rear cover we talked about a little bit earlier. You have a lube dam and uh, relief spring there on the bottom side of the upper valve body. In the middle valve body, you have uh, four check balls. You have two screens. One of the screens has little uh, springs. Um, springs go up against the separator plate. They face up. Stepper motor um, is bolted to this middle valve body. On the other side of the middle valve body, you have your a can style um, screen. On this valve body, I did see little wear. I'm not going to say it needed to be replaced yet, but I did see some wear in the TCC bore and in the solenoid regulator bore. Um, for the most part, to me, I could clean this valve body up and just reuse it. I didn't see any extreme wear on this valve body. I don't know how many miles or anything it had on this valve body. It was just a core. Here's the lower valve body. Um, the manual valve is in the lower valve body. You see your TCC limit valve. That valve did have some wear on it also. Uh, actually, it was in the bore, not on the valve. Um, I vacuum tested it. It was about 18 inches of vacuum on the very small end. Uh, I would have reused it. Primary uh, pressure and secondary pulley um, valves, they didn't show anywhere on this valve body that I was working on. I have heard of some wear areas. These are areas that you do definitely want to check. Here's some sensor layouts, uh, range sensors on top of the transmission. Uh, they, nothing special here. The 08A uh, range sensors inside the trans, so that's a little bit different. Secondary speed sensor is above the diff, reading off the secondary pulley. Uh, primary speed sensor is on the back cover or close to the back cover. One thing with this transmission, really need to check uh, case connectors, pins, corrosions, uh, female and male side, both sides have been numerous problems. Charging systems and alternator problems have been another big issue with this transmission. Bad batteries need to check the basics on these a lot of times that will take care of a lot of no power problems I'd like to say thank you seal aftermarket product uh, they're the ones who make this uh, webinar uh, possible uh, thank you transstar wit yours nat pro Polito. Uh, thanks all of our sponsors we, we really do appreciate you we went over this uh, screenshot also guys, uh, if you have friends, people that are interested in transmissions, maybe they're kids that might want to learn a little bit about transmissions or may have an interest in automotive, you know, let them sign up, get, put them on the mailing list for webinars. Uh, maybe they might get some people uh, that want to learn more. Um, also get yourself signed up on so you know when these uh, webinars are coming out. We have some good ones coming up on the 6L80 um, and the 09G and more on the CVTs also. Also send an email to a colleague. Uh, pl please help us out getting the word out. And that's it for today. I really appreciate your guys' time. Please, if you have any feedback, uh, let us know. If you have any questions, 
um, let me know. Also, on the ball size, if you have questions, please get a hold of me. Um, you can email me at webinearsatra.com um, or jwarren at atra.com, and I can answer that question for you also. Thanks again. You guys have a great day.